Welcome to the product presentation of Simcoe PDM6, a production data management software by Simcoe. This first section will show how to carry out the installation of the PDM. Start the PDM setup by double clicking the Simcoe PDM installation file and follow the dialogues through the installation. Select the installation language and click OK. Confirm the target directory, in this case drive C folder Simco. We want to install all components of the software, so select full installation. Keep the default start menu folder and click next and then install. The software installs and click finish to finish the installation. The installation is now completed. After successfully installing the Simcoe PDM6, we now have to start the NC-based database server using administrator rights. Right click the database server icon to launch the context menu. Click run as administrator. Click start to run the database server service. The service starts and we are asked if we want to install the sample data. For our purposes select no here. The service is started and we click OK to close the dialog. Now start the Simcoe PDM server. Click the Select License button to select a valid license file. Then click Start Server. The PDM server updates the NC Base database. The server is now running and click OK to close the window. Start the Simco PDM by double clicking the program icon. The PDM opens. Click on Explorer in order to log into the database and show the main view. On the left side of the window is the search screen. This is used to search the database. In a table on the right the production data will be listed. The lower part of the window shows the corresponding details of each element in the database. We will now create a new project to give you an understanding of the capabilities of the PDM. So we click on the Add button in the toolbar and enter a project number. We click Add and the project appears in the PDM and now we can add different elements to the project. We we'll now create a new example part. Right click on the project label to have the context menu appear. Select the menu item add part. Give the part an appropriate name. Click the add button and the component appears in the overview. We can now add more files to this component like CAD or CAM files. We will now add a new CAD file to the part. Right click the part and select the menu item add CAD file. A new dialog file pops up. In this dialog we can now choose a CAD source file that can that we can add to the PDM. This file is then copied, moved or linked to the destination folder depending on the selected file action. Loading from template is also possible. The target directory is very configurable and may either be a local folder or a server drive. It consists of a root directory 
in this case drive C folder NC data and the subfolders carry the corresponding level names. When opening a file we can choose if the file names of the source and destination should be identical or if the destination file should be named automatically. The rules for auto numbering are adjustable in the database settings. We click add and the CAD file is now added. Adding a CAM file is similar to adding a CAD file. On the CAD level, right click to open the context menu, select add CAM file to open the desired CAM file. In the CAM file dialog, However, it's also possible to select a machine group as this behavior has been enabled in the database settings. Changing the machine group has an effect on the CAM file target directory. It is possible to save CAM files into different directories for each machine group. We click add and the CAM file is added to the project. Another way to add CAM files to the PDM is to use the built-in master CAM interface. We'll now turn on the preview function in the database settings, a PDM feature that's very useful in combination with master CAM. As you can see, there is now a preview of the CAD file on the details screen. If the PDM settings have been set to associate the CAD file type with MasterCAM, we can open the file directly from the PDM into MasterCAM. So the file is loaded into MasterCAM. And then if we have the Simcoe toolbar in MasterCAM, we're able to send the CAM file directly back to the PDM. The file selection dialog appears. Click Add to save the file in PDM. So the CAM file is added and you can see that we have a preview of the CAM file which shows the latest view from MasterCAM. We can now choose to work with this new file but for the moment we will delete this file. We can now add an NC file to our sample project CAM level. Again right click to select the context menu. In the NC selection dialog it's also possible to select machine groups and file options. We can assign a specific customer and other details such as a part or drawing number or a description. These details are configurable in the PDM settings according to your requirements. We now add the NC file. So I click Add, and the NC file appears under the CAM file. Of course, the PDM provides an interface to the Simcoe DNC Max system. NC files can be sent directly from the PDM to the assigned machine groups. Right click the NC file to open a context menu and select the menu option send. In the dialog it's possible to change the pre-selected options if needed. The program can now be sent to the machine. Another useful feature is the possibility to add other files such as images and Microsoft Word or Excel documents to the PDM structure. 
This allows for a better management and presentation of each production step. For example, to assign a picture to a part, open the context menu of that part and select the option Add Other File. The possibility to add other files depends on the database settings. Select a file and add it to the PDM. The file is automatically stored in the subdirectory called Other in the Parts root directory. Now you can see the picture has been added. Let's take a look at the Simcoe PDM database settings. To show the settings window, open the menu and select database configuration. If you now select level settings on the left, all the levels that can be added to the PDM are shown. All of the levels are freely configurable. You can rename or delete levels and you can also add new levels. It's possible to define which sub-levels are allowed to be added to the levels. For example, when we do not want NC files to be added to parts, we can remove the NC levels from the allowed levels on the available levels section. Every level must have specific level properties in order to generate the file paths of the production data. These properties can be set in the Level Options section and the Level Directories section. Thanks to the freely configurable level structure of the PDM, it can be easily customised for your customer needs. In the Level Options submenu, it's possible to, to change how the levels are defined. For example, if they contain files or machine groups, or if the files on those levels have to be stored in the machine-specific directories. We can even define the rules that are used to generate the level names. In the Database field submenu, we can specify a level details, in this case a parts number entered by the user when adding a new part level. The submenu file handling controls how files are added to the PDM. We can specify how files are generated as well as the default file actions like copy, move or link or if a temp template file is used. If a file from template is selected, the specified template file will be copied to the target directory so that default data are created with a new level. This is also a useful PDM feature. In submenu applications, you can set which applications should open files when double clicked within the PDM. This function works independent of Windows Explorer file associations. This means you can open files from within the PDM using your predefined application, even if the file is linked to another application in the Windows Explorer. Submenu predefined fields let you create a predefined value or several values for the user to choose from. This reduces the risk from users entering a wrong value. Another nice feature is the ability to synchronize database fields. As you can see in the Levels sub sync menu, the database field part numbers of the NC file is synchronized with the part number of the part level. Let's take a look at the machine specific settings. The Simcoe PDM can manage multiple machine groups. Every machine group can have its own data directory in which the CAD and CAM files are stored. You can modify these directories in the submenu directories. For example, the CAM file or the NC file directory. You can also set machine specific settings for CAM or NC files, for example, if you want to use a different template for MASIC machines. 
machine specific settings are active if the sub menu level options preferred machine directories and machine settings are checked with the auto import feature of the PDM you can automatically import post processor generated NC files into the PDM this feature requires that the post processor is configured to write the name of the associated CAM file in the NC file. The PDM searches for the trigger sequence in the NC file and automatically matches the NC file from the user configurable auto import directories into the CAM file. Assigning NC files from the Windows Explorer no longer applies. Another useful feature is the possibility of creating user, users and user groups. As default, there is one user group, administrators, containing the user admin. We can create a, a second user group called NC Programmers that has access rights to everything NC file related. The submenu users lets you map all the users to the specific user groups. For example, the user NC who then gets all the rights to the NC programmer's user group. This concludes the PDM presentation.